So as you can see here, I have a Renko chart. Now a Renko chart is not a chart that a lot of people are used to. You can find this chart on the top hand side of trading view when you select the bar styles drop down. You'll be able to find it over here on the bottom where it says Renko. Now I like making stuff simple, so I'm not going to go over the hard technical stuff of the Renko and how it works. But all you basically need to know is that a new bar on the Renko chart is created whenever it reaches a certain price uh, value, right? And the way you can set this price value is by double clicking the Renko chart and you'll be able to choose the assignment method, which is a choice between ATR, which stands for average true range and traditional. Average true range is honestly what I prefer to use as it will just collect data from 14 days of the chart and it'll create the limit that um, the bars get created. Now there are two reasons why I like the Renko chart. The first reason is because you'll be easily able to identify what the trend is. Now looking at this chart right here, this is the SPY on the 3 minute. You can see using the Renko, you see the most dominant trend here is the bullish trend, right? We could see higher lows and you could see the price increasing. And as I said, the Renko chart only creates a new candle once the criteria for the price is met. So this means that the chart itself is not really dependent on time. And it's always best to identify the trends because more times than not, better to trade alongside the trend. So the Renko chart, since it removes a lot of noise from the chart, allows you to see the more dominant trend on the chart. So other alls from being able to identify the trend the other reason why I like using the Renko charts is because it will, be, it will be able to provide some important levels. You can refer to these as supply and demand zones or as support and resistance levels. It's up to you, but primarily it's usually a point where there is a, an area where the stock either bounces or rejects off of. So the way to draw this is pretty simple. It's basically finding the change from one trend to the other. So for example, we'll look over here, right? We could see that we had a bullish momentum to the upside and then we had a reversal to the downside. Now this will create a zone itself and as you can see on the Renko chart, it demonstrates as having a green candle and then followed by a red candle with a tail, right? So what we would do is find our handy dandy rectangle tool and we would want to plot from the top of the wick, right? This is in case this is for the supply zone or resistance level, whatever you want to call it. And you plot it from the top of the wick to the bottom of the body of the bullish candle. And I'll show you what this looks like on the candlestick chart. So now what I'll be moving on to is how to draw the you could say the demand zone. And it works basically the same way as a supply zone. Uh, just vice versa. So what we'll use is this scenario right here. We will use the wick of the bullish candle, right? So we'll get back our rectangle tool, plot from the beginning of the wick or the bottom of the wick, sorry, to the body, the end of the body of the bearish candle, or you could say the bearish Renko bar. And when we do this, you'll see that we created a demand zone. All you need to know is usually when these levels are created, they are usually respected. So now that we created this, we'll color code this so it's a little easier for us to understand. So we'll make this demand zone green and the supply zone red. And we will shift over to the candle chart. And when I do this, you'll see if we scroll out and we head to where we drew these zones, you can see that SPY did in fact respect these levels and over here you could see that spy bounced off of it off of the demand zone and you could see for the supply zone even though it breached the level it did in fact reverse back into the downside past that you can see that it did respect the zone a few more times before eventually it broke out of the zone the great thing is about these levels is that even though it is broken past, you can still refer to these levels later on while trading. So now the next question is how do we exactly trade these zones? You can refer to the supply and demand video that I've posted a little bit back on my YouTube channel. But what I'll show you is an easy way to trade these using the RSI. 
Now over here, I've pulled up the RSI, and I'll show you my settings over here in case you want to screenshot this or refer to it. But heading back to the chart, what you want to spot for in reversals is basically an RSI divergence. We will use this demand zone bounce as an example over here. And what basically an RSI divergence is where you start seeing the RSI show momentum in the opposite side, the stock futures or currencies moving. So in this case, we have the we have SPY heading down towards the downside, but you can see here on the RSI, we're actually creating higher lows regardless of the momentum to the downside. This means that there's a higher probability of a move in the opposite direction of the current trend. This means that we can enter into longs or calls for trading options or futures in order to get a good bounce off of this demand zone into the upside. So you can see here we have the RSI divergence, the downward momentum, and over here or over here after confirmation would be a good entry for calls or longs. This is what I personally would do. If you refer also to this supply zone, you can see it's a little bit harder to spot the RSI divergence. The only indication you have of a possible reversal to the downside is the RSI poking outside of the band. Right. So the, here in this scenario, you would have to pair the RSI with a little bit more technical analysis such as price action, reversal patterns on the chart, and so on. Now if we move down to this area over here where we touch the demand zone, you can see we initially breached it, but according to the RSI, we did not get much evidence of a strong reversal, and you can see that once we did bounce off of it, we did not get much moment momentum to the upside. So further down, we start getting this creep down again into the demand zone. We breach it, but now we look at the RSI. You can see here that we had this low over here where we breached the demand zone, and we had this low over here where we breached it again. But you can see this is an RSI divergence due to the fact that it is a higher low compared to the previous low. I'll show you trend line over here. Zoom into the chart so you could see on the RSI that we had an RSI divergence and we had a higher low. So because of this, a long or a call entry at this point would not be an unreasonable entry. Therefore, if we were to wait for confirmation or whatever you do based on your risk tolerance, you would have a high probability setup because you're using the RSI divergence and the levels that you drew according to Renko charts. This trade right here, if trading options from 420, let's say you entered right over here from 427 all the way close to the supply zone, right? This is a dollar, almost a two dollar move. It's a dollar and nine nine cents to be exact. This would be over a hundred percent in options, and I can't tell you how much in futures because I, I barely know the pips and all that but the general rule of thumb when it comes to trading supply and demand zones is you would trade from zone to zone so in this scenario you trade from this demand zone to the supply zone just like over here we would trade from this demand zone to the supply zone and if you did enter puts or shorts on the supply zone you trade all the way to this demand zone so basically, this is the overview of how to use Renko charts and how to use it properly. Just to briefly go over what we went over, Renko charts shows you the dominant trend. And as you can see in this scenario, it was the bullish trend. And what it can help you do is also be able to plot these zones and levels that I primarily use when trading. These zones can be referred as supply and demand zones or support and resistance levels. But the whole concept is to be able to know when to enter a potential small or huge reversal using the levels that are created by created or shown by Renko charts. If you have any questions about Renko charts or want a video with more examples on how to create the levels and other scenarios, feel free to write down in the comment section. Also, if you would want a trading strategy or trading concept explained in a more simple way, like I usually do on my videos, feel free to put that in the comment section as well. If you guys want to reach out on me in Discord, I'll put out my uh, links in the description. But till next time, stay safe and enjoy your day. Thank you.